Hello, Nitin Dahad here with the Times, and I'm at the uh, Financial Times Future of the Car Conference in London with Kurt Sievers, who's a CEO of NXP Semiconductors. Kurt, hello. Hi, Nitin. Nice to meet you. So, Kurt, uh, I think um, at this conference uh, for the last few years, it's been about EVs, it's been about software-defined vehicles. Uh, you did a session today uh, with a sort of panel on uh, software-defined vehicles, and I think in this kind of audience, there was still the question of, are we there yet with software-defined vehicles? I think you had a very good answer, and I think uh, it'd be interesting for our audience just to sort of play back what you, what you were talking about. I'm happy to do so, absolutely. So what, what I was saying is the software-defined vehicle is not a one-step thing. It's not like digital. Tomorrow we have software-defined vehicles. In the past we never had. It is a gradual process. So cars are becoming increasingly software-defined, and there are the first ones out here. Why does it matter, Nitin? Why are people pushing for it? Because I think it is the biggest transformation in the promise a car company can make to its customers, to us as consumers. And that promise is very simple. With a software-defined vehicle, you go away from what it used to be, where when you bought the car, when I bought a car, it was the best in that very short moment where I drove it off the lot of the dealership. And from then, it lost value, and especially it lost performance against my expectations. With a software-defined vehicle, it's going to be exactly the opposite. The moment you get it, it's the worst it will ever be, and it gets only better from there because software upgrades will drive performance, will drive appearance, will drive excitement for consumers. So that's a big reason why people want to do it. Now, it's not easy, and that was part of the discussion here. What does it take to get there? Yeah, and I, and I think I was quite surprised with one of the questions about, and I think, yeah, it's moved on about uh, the car being uh, so a, a smartphone on wheels, and I think you address that quite well. In yeah, that was in the context about what is needed for a software-defined vehicle. Uh, because for some people it sounds like, oh, this is simple. We, it's, it's a computer on wheels. We just build a computer on wheels. And I'm violently against that notion. So it is not a computer on wheels. It's not a smartphone on wheels. Because what it has to have is real-time performance. Everything which makes a car safe is about real-time performance. Mm. It needs the highest degrees of cybersecurity. Because that is, you open the door to cyber threats with the software-defined nature of the car. And you need a much lower power budget when it comes to the, to the power consumption of the, of the processors as compared to many other applications. Because otherwise, you go orthogonal to what you want to achieve with range extension, etc., cetera, in, uh, in EVs. So there is a set of very, very specific requirements. And that's actually where NXP is pushing for to have processors which deliver on that particular requirement. And um, the other big uh, story in the last few weeks has been about the slowdown in EVs. But I think uh, what's quite interesting is you know, software-defined vehicles is not dependent on EVs. I think your point was that, uh, yes, it sort of um, accelerates the adoption, but actually it's applicable to sort of all kinds of um, powertrains. Yeah, I got two comments here, Nitin, and, and that's, uh, it's, it's a really good question because there's a lot of misperceptions currently. The one is SDV per se is not at all dependent on EVs. It, it's, a, it's a concept which is applicable to any kind of car. Now, EVs will be probably the early carriers simply because they are designed by the more pushy and more aggressive teams, which also have the guts to change the whole concept uh, uh, in a transformation to SDV. Secondly, I'm also not agreeing that there is a, is a massive moderation of EVs. Yes, the pace is a little slower than it was last year, but from a higher base. Mm. Uh, anybody would tell you, and I guess a good data source is S&P, that the number of ex-EVs, so hybrids and full EVs together this year, is still going to grow by more than 20% in units in a flat SAR environment. I mean, take a flat SAR and then have that big portion of ex-EVs, which is between 35 and 38% this year, is growing by 20% in units. This is massive. So I, I, I don't call that a moderation. Now, my view why that is, is a lot of what we read about this is, is from a Western perspective. Now, the largest part of the XEVs and the fastest growing comes from China. Right. So it's a little bit of where you stand. If you look at this from a China perspective, you would never say this. Indeed, I mean, and and I think part of the discussions have been around China, and and yes, okay, it's already at a very high level, yeah, and yeah. maybe it's just sort of flattening off a little bit. Yeah, I, China is by far the, the biggest, and by the way, China already pre-pandemic has been the biggest car market. 
I mean, we, we are always a bit confused in the U.S. and in Europe, <laughs> but it, it, has, it has been China already for quite a while. And now with EVs coming into the game and the, the bullishness, I would say, but also the success in design from Chinese manufacturers, uh, it even more tilts in that direction. And again, if you then look at the, at the global picture, a 20% 20, 20 unit growth year on year is for me not, a, not, not really a moderation. <laughs> And, and the uh, other thing I think we, we, we forget about in the, in the Western world, I guess, is it's not just about automotive vehicles. Because, I mean, I've just come back from a, a, a visit to India and it's about two-wheelers. It's about the electric uh, two-wheelers and electric, and it's, a, it's going in a big way. Well, when you mention India, I, I actually believe India has a pretty brilliant future. Um, as a large democracy with an enormous amount of people. Um, so I do believe that uh, probably the next 10, 15 years, India will become a very, very strong economy, um, which is then also a very great market for electronics, uh, including semiconductors. And indeed, currently from a development perspective, the concept of two wheelers is, is actually a big deal. And by the way, they are electric. Uh, they have IVI systems, which is amazing. I mean, from our perspective, that is a, a whole new market which, which is coming up uh, sharp and big. And changing tack from automotive to India, um, uh, so you were in India with Lars and uh, I, I met with her, your general manager there as well uh, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, what is it that you uh, felt about your meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi? I was deeply impressed, Nitin. I because he was very well informed about the electronics industry, about the global trends, about the requirements of semiconductors in a global network. But you can never look at this from an isolated perspective. And he, he is a, he's a, a, a leader who understands this from a global perspective. And from all of his questions and the debate we had, I could really conclude that he does take the right steps to get India ready uh, for the next decade in order to become also a player in electronics and eventually semiconductors. Uh, I found that very impressive. Again, the level of knowledge, the level of interest, very impressive. And uh, now looking at um, uh, you, uh, uh, NXP, you know, one of the top semiconductor manufacturers in the world, um, what's keeping you busy right now? What, what are your hot agenda items? Well, I come back to the first point of our discussion. Uh, we are obsessed about the software-defined vehicle. We, we really believe this is a fundamental transformation, which obviously is also very, very good from a chip business perspective. So for us, from a revenue growth perspective, over the next five to 10 years, SDV is going to play a major role. Uh, but we are also obsessed about dealing with something which is more difficult in the world, which is all the geopolitical uh, turmoil which in many cases means a fragmentation of supply chains, a fragmentation of R&D activity, which admittedly is not perfectly in line with the need for scale of the semiconductor industry. We, we've been an industry which has been ideally globalized mm -hmm. over many years, and now suddenly we have to deal with this. My view is let's get ahead of this. Uh, so let, let's not hide away, but let's get ahead of this and get the best solutions because we can change the world. I mean, it is what it is. So we live with it. That's secondly on my agenda. Thirdly, and probably most overarchingly, we are really building a company to be the, the leader on the intelligent edge. Uh, and the car is one part of that, but there is, of course, much more. If you think about robotics in the smart home, robotics in industrial automation, these are all edge applications. And I believe, mid to longer term, a lot of the AI hype, which currently takes place in the data center, is actually going to move to the edge. That's what I was seeing at Embedded World in Nuremberg recently as well, but yes. I think yes. that's abs absolutely right. Yes. Well, Kurt, thank you very much. Nitin, thank you very much. See you next.